Hi there, Sage Canada of VO2 Max Productions here with another training talk video. Today we're going to talk about nutrition and how it relates to hopefully improving your performance at endurance events from marathon distances all the way up to 50k, 50 miles, 100k, even 100 mile endurance events. Now before we get started, I just want to do this as a disclaimer. I am not an expert nutritionist, I'm not a doctor, um, do this at your own risk. I'm not liable for injury or death resulting in any extreme diets, and I don't advocate that. Um, consult your doctor before trying anything new. But uh, I did, I've did. i done a lot of lay study, uh, read up on some scientific material going into this, and also, I, you know, it's been a passion of mine. Nutrition, uh, I've always felt, has been the second most important thing that you could do to improve your athletic performance and overall health, basically, besides the, the exercise itself sleep and life stresses aside uh, being extra variables. But, you know, definitely is important to look at your nutrition. And I did take a, a couple classes at Cornell when I was there, dabbling in maybe considering a nutrition major. Um, and I've also talked to a lot of elite runners uh, in different circles. You've read stuff on different blogs. There's always articles out there in, in running magazines or online that people have personal experiences. And, you know, you have to be a little bit leery uh, with what some of the people say um, just because there are a lot of variables out there. And that includes what I'm saying in this video as well. You know, take it with a grain of salt, no pun intended. So we do see a lot of extremes with like the Atkins diet, paleo, uh, fruitarian diet, all these things that, you know, limit carbs, restrict carbs, or you eat, you know, extremely high percentage of carbohydrates in your diet. And I'm not going to advocate any of those extreme diets. I don't think you necessarily want to get your body in, into a state of ketosis. But I do think that there is some truth to nutrient timing and your training. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today is looking at endurance events as how you're utilizing your main fuel sources and how you can improve your endurance through a combination of strategic training workouts and through your nutrition. And realize that I'm probably biased in this. Um, I've been a lifelong vegetarian for 28 years and I've eaten a pretty high carb diet uh, over the years competing. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about vegetarianism today. I think plant-based diet's a, a great way to go and getting a mix of fruits and vegetables uh, is, it's usually hard to do, at least for most Americans, you gotta eat your fruits and veggies. So, you know, as with all diet and most things, variety and moderation is always a key. Um, but let's get to the specifics of the endurance events first. Now basically, we have our sugars, carbohydrates in the form of glycogen, mainly stored in the liver, and what we also ingest maybe in the form of a gel during the race. And we got our fat stores, our lipids. Um, and we have a lot more of these. Uh, these are in our body. And as we're running a marathon or an ultra marathon, we're gonna be burning through both of these, ideally. And the higher intensity you go, the more you're gonna have to burn through your sugars because they're a readily available source. You could just pull that out um, and you, you know, you eat a gel, you get that, that little energy spike. Uh, the fat stores are harder to tap into. They're a little slower on the get-go, um, and you have to be going at a, at a lower intensity usually uh, to really utilize them efficiently. Now, the key is, if we're burning like this with our sugars mainly, we're gonna run out pretty quickly. Uh, and since we have so much fat stores that we could tap into, ideally we wanna shift so that we're utilizing more and more of the fat stores. Um, and so that's really the key into this video is how can we change our, our body's mechanisms of oxidizing fat as a fuel more efficiently so we could extend our endurance at a higher, a relative higher intensity. And that's really the key to, I think, any endurance event marathon and up um, is utilizing your fuel sources. And that's really muscular fatigue and things like dehydration aside and mental toughness, 
that's really going to be a, a main limiting factor. And I think that's why it's so important to talk about in a training video like today. All right, so how do we improve our fat utilization, our fat burning relative to going through all these carbs? Because we only have a limited supply. You could run on your carbs for about 20 miles and then you're going to hit the wall. So if you're utilizing more fat as a fuel, you spare that glycogen. You spare your carbohydrates um, that are stored in the liver as glycogen that you ingest um, to keep yourself going. And if you're running an ultra event, you know, you're going to have to ingest calories along the way. Quick sources of carbohydrate is what I'd usually do. This is a V-Fuel gel um, sponsored by them, of course. But, you know, it's something I do. I'd take one every 20 minutes uh, during a race. I wouldn't do that in training, though. And that's really the key to look at here is how can we mix our training effect with our diet to yield an optimal performance in a race. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, what you eat and when, so the timing is important. And looking at all these studies, I was looking at Journal of Applied Physiology online. Uh, let me cite some studies here. Uh, we got Finney et al, 1983, um, Lambert et al, 1994, Simi et al, 1991, Hedge, or Hegel et al, 1996, and that last one, a group that ate a high fat diet, and then a group that ate a uh, higher carbohydrate, traditional 70% carbohydrate diet and they tried to they were untrained athletes though and so they went through seven weeks of training and their performance is basically in the fat the high fat diet group weren't as good as as the ones in the the high carb group and but you look at the study and they they did the tests were to time to exhaustion but it was at a, a intensity of 80 percent uh, about of maximum heart rate or 80% of VO2 max, which is too high of an intensity, I think, to, to tap into fat uh, burning sources. And they even said at the end, um, I wrote down this quote even, basically, with endurance time of five hours or more, the relative exercise intensity is low and not comparable with our study or generally used in endurance tests. Well, I'm really only interested in tests of five hours or more if I'm doing an ultra and even for a marathon of you know two hours or more you're still going to want to be able to tap into fat sources. In this study these guys were only going for about 60 minutes on a time to exhaustion test and I mean of course you're going to be burning mainly through carbs and the limiting factor there is going to be lactic acid building up in, in your bloodstream uh, at that intensity. So you know, other studies they looked at, they tested mice, they tested dogs, uh, they tested trained athletes, professional cyclists with pretty high VO2 maxes. And they found that, you know, a, a relatively higher fat, higher fat diet, a higher percentage of fat in your diet, maybe in the 60% range, uh, did allow you to kind of tap into utilizing fat as a fuel a little bit more efficiently when you did maybe a longer ride or a longer run. And you could also get the same thing just through a training effect though. Even if you didn't change your diet, if you were doing you know, 20 mile long runs or 30 mile long runs and limiting your carbohydrate intake a little bit at a moderate intensity, 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate, uh, you're gonna be in an ideal fat burning zone and you're gonna teach the body uh, to not only store more glycogen in the liver, but to utilize fat as a fuel more efficiently. So it's really a, a training effect with your workouts that you can do um, to help promote this. And you see with a lot of elite athletes, just running higher mileage generally helps with this uh, shift in uh, metabolism. Uh, you've got a lot of guys that you know go out and they'll eat quite a few carbs. Uh, maybe they'll eat a lot of carbs for breakfast, maybe they won't. Um, but they could still go out and run 20 miles based off of all the, the sugar just in their liver. But they're definitely utilizing some fat as a fuel. And you could definitely do that in a race as short and intense as a marathon. So I just wanted to add uh, the story in basically uh, a good example, I think, of a, a major meltdown that I had was at the Yurok Ultra Race of Champions 100K this year. I uh, basically hit the wall really hard, went hypoglycemic. And I think a lot of that has to do with this whole um, overtraining, but also not training the right way uh, to utilize fat efficiently as a fuel for the demands of that race. And you look at 
my training. I'm like, yeah, I, I overtrained, I overtaxed my skeletal muscular system by running too fast and too hard and climbing too much when I wasn't used to it. But also, I was doing all these 15 to 20 mile long runs in the mountains at altitude at too high of a intensity probably. I was probably going over 80%, 75, 80% of my maximum heart rate, which means I was burning straight carbs real hot, teaching my metabolism to go through those carbs real fast. And when it came to race day, I had to go 65 miles in the snow at altitude. I was burning it way too hot, totally ran out of carbs. Couldn't tap into the fat sources that I needed to. And you see guys like Killian or Dakota Jones or Rob Carr, obviously, you know, kicked my butt and I was really hurting in that race. But I think that's a good example of how overtraining and too high intensity of running to not allow yourself to get into that fat burning zone uh, can really inhibit your race day performance. So in closing, ideally, I, you know, I wouldn't promote any extreme diets. Uh, they're, they're throwing around percentages of how many, how much calories you should get from fats, how many, how many calories you should restrict uh, with your carbohydrates. And I don't believe in, in all that. I think you need a variety in your diet. You need a good mix of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Uh, and you need to strategically plan that with your training because your training is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of being able to extend your specific endurance but also to utilize fat as a fuel. And from personal experience, I will limit you know how many gels I take during a 20 or 30 mile training run uh, if I'm going about 70% effort. Uh, but during a race, I'd, I'd switch over to taking one every 20 minutes and I'd be doing, you know, I might go into a run when I trained for my uh, PR 216 in the marathon at Hanson's Brooks. I used to go into 20 mile long runs without eating breakfast and I wouldn't advocate that for most people, but I still had enough glycogen left over from eating pasta or pizza the night before to get through that. And I think, you know, eating some protein, eating some healthy fats, omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, uh, will help you have enough energy to do that, but you still need to mix it in with plenty of carbohydrates, especially for the more intense workouts like speed training, VO2 max workouts, lactate threshold, tempo runs. And I think that is the real key. It's, you know, it's a double-edged sword with nutrition. It's a lot like altitude training. You have to have, you have to cycle it a little bit. And, you know, going into a marathon, my last marathon on Sunday at Carlsbad, you know, two days before I started carbo loading, I did restrict my carb intake a little bit. I ate a little bit more protein to get the similar amount of calories. And then, you know, three days, two and a half days before the race, I started shifting to eating more carbs. I call that a mini carb load cycle, basically. I don't know how effective it was, but that's the, the practice that I use personally, and it's, it's worked pretty well for me. Um, and I'll also be ingesting a lot of carbs during the race. And I think, you know, it is a little bit of an individual thing, but it's something you have to experiment around with and you still have to eat a pretty healthy variety in your diet and to make sure you get enough calories and enough nutrients uh, to adapt to your training. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more via 2Max Productions. Thank you.